In this episode, I'm on Cedros Island in Mexico with the boys from Fish Village. Jeff Mariani of Cedros Kayak Fishing is our host and guide for the week, and he's using his two pongas to mothership our kayaks to different hot spots around the island. Oh, dude, it's a monster, bro. <laughs> A few years back, I ditched the corporate grind to pursue my passions for fishing and travel. And now, the boys from Fish Village and I are scouring the world for the ultimate fishing destinations. You're watching Field Trips with Robert Field. Nice! We own them now. We're staying at Jeff's place in El Pueblo, which, despite being the largest town on the island, the founders simply named it The Town. Alarms went off at 5 a.m. and less than an hour later, Jeff's driving the two pongas down to the water. All right, good morning, guys. So morning of day one here in Mexico. It's about uh, six in the morning. We've all been up for about an hour, getting everything ready. All the guys here at Jeff's place have been setting up the pongas. All the boats are loaded, all the gears loaded. Basically, we're gonna take one boat at a time down to the boat ramp. It's about five minutes away. We walked over and saw it yesterday. So we'll go drop one boat in, get it going, come back up here with the truck grab the other boat, go down, and today we got about maybe a 20 mile run to the fishing grounds that we're gonna go to. So what the, this is a mothership operation. We're loading up kayaks in the Ponga every single day and going out to different fishing grounds. What's awesome about that is that the first place we go isn't fishing that well, it's slow, there's no bait. We can load them back up at the Pongas and zip off anywhere around Cedros Island, including a few of the other smaller islands that are nearby. So tons of water to fish. Jeff knows this place like the back of my hand. One thing I love about Jeff, the owner here, is that he's coming out kayak fishing with us every single day. He does this stuff. He's the real deal. So, yeah, the guys have all been working hard, getting everything ready. I think we're ready to go. So we can get into some fish today. Let's do this. Bro, that's something bigger right there. That was a big fish right there by that buoy. Would it be spicy with grouper? That was a something solid right there. Look, there's bait everywhere, bro. You see this? Yeah, I do see it. Someone's pushing that up right now. Yeah. Right here next to the boat. It's always a good sign when you're just here at the boat ramp, waiting on Jeff, and uh, there's literally bait busting out of the water everywhere. Something just attacked it. These birds are going crazy. We haven't even left the, the marina yet. Use that term loosely, but uh, yeah, it's looking good. It's feeling fishy so far. These pelicans are going nuts. As we motor out of the harbor and the sun begins to illuminate our surroundings, I'm blown away by the sheer contrast of this wild place. Looking at the island, it's a powerful reminder that humans have long been drawn to the sea. Without the abundant resources that it provides here, no human in their right mind would have ever settled this place. Yet they did, and the human history here is unparalleled. While anthropologists have long agreed that humans first came to North America by land, new evidence found right here on Cedros Island indicates that humans came here by boat over 13,000 years ago. The earliest fish hooks ever discovered in the Americas were found right here on this island and the shells they were made out of have persisted for over 11,000 years. While I can't help but be fascinated by the rich human history here, it's the life found below the waves that drew us to this world of browns and blues. Are you hooked up? Yeah. Jeff just dropped the line back just to kind of test the water he said, and he's hooked up. He's hooked up already. We put one hook in the water for, for five seconds, and he's already hooked up. It's a good sign. He That's thinks this is a bonita. Something's definitely going on out here today. Yeah, look at this bird. Little bonita. Be all that's out here, but there's yellows here too. So that right there, that's a little fishing village. Yeah, oh, nice! And he's on. They've got that like vibrating flight, like a tuna. All right, fish number two. Tranquilo, tranquilo. Bonita's not really a target species we're going for, but I mean they're a ton of fun. They're they're a species of tuna. They are fast. Let's see what else is working under these birds. Just pretty confident there's some yellowtail in the area, and that is definitely on our target list. But well, this is some insane bird activity right here. Something's going on. There is definitely bait. And where there's bait, there's predators, always. So one thing I just noticed, and Jeff just confirmed, we're here at kind of the north point of the island, and so there's a strong current that rips around this, this point of the island. And you can tell, I mean, as soon as we get here, there's really no wind, but uh, all of a sudden there's white caps, the water's a little rougher. That's that current, and that's something you always want to kind of look for when you're 
figuring out a fishery, trying to find fish in a place you don't know that well. Current is something that you know you would think intuitively, like you can't see it, but it's, it's actually very visible on the surface most of the time. All right, so this is the first spot. We're gonna drop in right here. They make this process super easy. They drop the boats in. They're pretty much three-fourths of the way rigged already. We'll hop in the boats. They'll drop in our crate. This kind of got all our gear in it already. They'll hand us the rods. We're going. So uh, this shouldn't take too long. And there's fish around here, y'all. I can smell them. Smell that? You smell that? Might not be fish. <laughs> oh, that's your feet. Go time. We got kelp everywhere. This is very similar water to like Southern California or San Clemente Island. First fish village trip I went on. Yeah, there's kelp all around us right now. Water clarity looks great. Boats are in the water. We gonna go, we gonna go fishing. Come along for the ride. Hola, coca, agua. No, todo bien, yeah, yeah. Gracias, amigo. A burrito delivery on the water. Eat this while uh, look around for some fish. Got a sea lion up here playing in the kelp. He says there's elephant seals around. There's gonna be seals, sea lions. Look, there's a bunch of them right here. They are curious animals. Look at this guy. <laughs> curious little guy. Basic strategy, we're gonna be fishing these kelp beds. The calico bass, the yellowtail, most of these fish are hunting in these kelp beds, just like the sea lions are hunting these kelp beds for the same fish we are. So we got a rig up pretty weedless. We're using pretty heavy braid, and that's mostly to cut through this kelp, not to, uh, actually because of the fish. Now, at the same time, there are 60 plus pound white sea bass out here. They're telling me that these calico bass are wildly strong and that even like a seven pounder can break 50 pound braid. Uh, I'm gonna start off. Oh, hey guy. Sea lion right there. I'm sure that won't be the first time they startled me this morning. I'm gonna start off with this guy right here. Basically a big swim bait. And you know, again, we're, you know, bass fishing. You know, not really largemouth bass fishing. This is the smallest swim bait that I really plan on using out here. Uh, but just what a gorgeous morning. The weather is, it could not be better. You can hear seals over there barking, going crazy on the rocks. Oh, this place is just gorgeous. Oh yeah, I'm getting follows. I think it's this swivel, bro. I don't think this thing's acting right. I'm gonna cut this off. Sometimes it looks like it's spinning. I think that's no, no bueno. Yeah, I didn't think about that with that, that swivel. Not worth changing it faster if it's gonna mess up the action. I'm definitely doing something wrong because even the Bonita, you're catching them right next to me and I'm not, I'm not hooking them. I just had like four follows. They're not committing to it. <laughs> Commitment issues, yeah. <laughs> I got a lot in common with these Bonita, it turns out. All right, let's see. Oh, yep, and there it is. I bet, oh! Ah. But hey, I mean, that second cast without the swivel and there it is. That must have been it, man. It was messing up the action. All right, it's a very interesting lesson I just learned. I'm throwing this stick bait and, oh, and there it is. Yeah, Bonita. So I've not been getting bit, even though right next to me, Jeff was using a different stick bait and getting hit left and right. And I finally figured out I'd put a swivel on there so I could change it out since I'm kind of learning this place and trying different techniques. And I think the swivel was messing up the action because I just took the swivel off and uh, that's two bites and three casts now. All right, little bonita. Now these are different than the bonita that we catch in uh, in Panama. Those are uh, like false albacore. This is more like, I mean, this is what I would call an Atlantic bonito, but here we are in the Pacific. But these guys have teeth, they're green, and they have very kind of uniform stripes instead of the kind of mottled pattern that the bonita we catch have. And I mean, in, in Panama, that would be money bait. And I'm sure if I put this guy out live, you could probably catch something on this here too. That's a pretty small one, pretty good size, but there it is, first fish to hand here in uh, on Cedros Island. We're gonna let this guy go. Well, Jeff said if there are bonita here, there should be yellows mixed in. Might just have to weed through these guys till we find the find our target. Now I don't see it. Something just hit it and missed it. Let's see if it comes back. Oh, oh, oh. 
Oh. Oh. Oh. No. <laughs> We're on. <laughs> it's like clockwork, man. Old torpedoes. Oh, self-released by slamming his head into my boat. Oh! Oh, he's in the kelp. Oh, it's bonita. That's what it was. Fish out. It's a bonita, I think. Feels like one. Yeah. That's on the stick bait. Oh! Yeah, you know, I didn't want it. That's just the quick release. I'm a conservationist. Okay, you, Another fish on. Feels like a bonita. Oh, something followed it. That's a good sign. Looks like a calico bass to me. So I just had a calico bass follow my lure almost all the way to the boat. And in my experience, if fish are following it and they're not hitting it, either something's messed up about how you rigged it or there's grass on it or something like that. But if nothing's kind of amiss with your bait, then in my experience, go faster. They're kind of waiting for this thing to start running away from them and uh, that'll kind of trigger the strike. You would think like, ah, oh, they're chasing it, they're not hitting it, I should slow it down so they can catch it. That's wrong, that is the opposite. It's definitely true for rooster fish, and I got a feeling it'll be true for just about anything out here too. So my bait looked great in the water, and whatever it was followed it, wouldn't commit. So I'm either gonna try it, speed it up, or kind of doing some pauses. Sometimes they're waiting for a pause, or some hesitation. So you can kind of pause, and then burn it back, and sometimes when it pauses and starts falling, they'll smack it. Or sometimes when it starts falling and then ramps up again, they'll smack it then. So I'm uh, going to try some different things and see if I can't get these fish to commit. The calicos are not cooperating today. So there it is. First calico bass of the day. Uh, got hit pretty much right away. It feels like a small bonita. Uh, I say small. You're stronger than I thought. Actually, pretty good, Benita. Woo! They're a strong fish. Fun fight. It's very fast. That's a pretty good one. It's been tough weeding through these guys, though. They're everywhere here. Woo wee! All right, all right. Come here. Another Benita. Definitely a bigger one. Beautiful fish. Fun fighters. Little torpedoes, and they're running around here in giant schools. They make for a fun, fun fight. Island. Oh, and there it is. They are no pushovers. This is a good one. Wow. Might be my PB right here. <laughs> you can always tell any kind of tuna species, the fight's got this like very distinct kind of vibration. Ooh yeah. We've got some chompers on them. All right, Jess, first one hooked up something good. We've all been hooking Benita. Looks like he's got something better next to the boat. Yeah, buddy! Yeah! He sounds pretty stoked. I think it's something good. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for right there, folks. Nice, brother. We are on the board. I love it. I love it. Jeff is the man here. These are his uh, new home waters, I'd say, by this point. Jeff here holds the world record broomtail grouper. This guy can fish, make no mistake about it. He doesn't just own the place. He's out here doing it with us and uh, as I would have guessed, showing us how it's done. Woo! Dude, great fish, man. Yeah. Gracias. Mi héroe. <laughs> Lunch, delivery, here on the water from Ramon. Gracias, amigo. You, you. Cheers. <gasps> no! <laughs> Committed now! Crazy how much live there is. I know, man. Dude, there's so much red crab right below me. I'm looking at thousands, bro. So thick, I'm marking them on my graph. So we're out here and the, uh, the red crabs are blooming or blossoming or schooling or I don't know whatever crabs do, but there's a million little red crabs in the water. Check this out. I first heard about pelagic red crab during my time touring the West Coast a few years back. 
but I did not fully appreciate the sheer scope of what this species is capable of. They are often called tuna crab or langostilla in Spanish, but they're actually a species of squat lobster native to right here in the Eastern Pacific. Little red crab. While they normally inhabit the continental shelf west of Mexico, they will migrate up into California water in warmer years, such as during El Nino. They act as the foundation of an impressive seasonal food chain. And everything from sea otters to whales to birds of all kinds take advantage by gorging on the defenseless critters. Oh yeah, Bonita. All these crabs on top. And of course, the fish like them too. There's something, a bunch of somethings below them. I asked Jeff about using them as bait, but he said that their soft bodies don't hold up very well on a hook. Regardless, with this much bait in the water of any kind, I know that there have to be predators in the area. But just tons of these red crabs right here. We're back in them. Birds everywhere. This is what we've been looking for. Let's see if there's some yellowtail hunting in the area. Oh! Big yellow just followed it all the way up. Nice. Oh, you son of a eat it! Yeah, definitely a yellow. I saw it clear as day. There's so much crab here, dude. Oh, I'm about to catch a fish, 100%. Come on. Fish out. Woo wee. Something. We got something. Fish on. I think it's a bonita. It's a pretty big jig, so it's gotta be a decent sized bonita if it is. But they're aggressive fish, so you never know. Woo! Hoo wee! This is the same setup. If you saw my New Zealand series, we were catching yellowtail. I got my personal best yellowtail on this exact setup right here. A 23 pounder. And it's rated for fish bigger than that. But it makes it fun. This, this rod bends. <laughs> I don't know. It is, it's a decent one. It doesn't actually really have a fight like a Bonita. This feels more like, almost like a jack or <laughs> Almost like a jack of all or the second half of a rooster fish fight. Could be a yellow, I don't know. I'm not familiar enough with these fish to, to really be able to identify one. I got a feeling it's probably Bonita, but if it is, it's gotta be a big one. It's rip and drag, multiple screaming runs now. I got something, man. If it's a Bonita, it's a big one. This is on the vertical jig. Jeez. And there's more below me. I tightened down a little bit. But I got this fish up away from the structure. I hit it about, it hit about halfway up the water column, so uh, there's no point in horsing it. There's no kelp right around me, so I don't have to worry about them fouling me up on that. That is one thing here and kind of on the west coast is kelp makes this a lot trickier. So it reminds me actually of when I first started offshore fishing in Texas. <laughs> uh, around the oil rigs, you're kind of fighting fish up off a structure the entire way up the water column, which makes it really tricky. And around the kelp here, it's the same thing, but I don't see any kelp. I haven't seen any kelp in this area, so I should be good to kind of take my time with this guy. I got some color. <laughs> Can't tell yet. It's nice and easy. Oh. <laughs> good Lord. No way. I'm, I'm thinking no way this is a Benita now, you know. I've definitely been surprised by fish before, but this guy is... This has to be a yellow, man. If it's a bonita, it better be five feet long. Get up here. Oh, I see him. Yeah! Yellow! Should I gaff it? All right, cool. Good. Oh, dude, it's a monster, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Solid one, man. I haven't caught very many, so, you know, to you it's probably, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, God, he got my drive for a second, but he's good. This is like my PB territory for sure. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, sick fish, man. 
<laughs> I was like, oh, I'm sure it's another bonita, you know, they're everywhere. Down deep. Oh man, got it down way down deep. Like five minutes in, I was like, there's no way. There is no way that this is a damn bonita. Look at that guy, dude. That's solid, right? Very solid. 18 to 20 right 18 there. 18 to 20, yeah. Like I said, my PB is 23. Like it's definitely in that like caliber. Now there we go. Uh, Hell yeah. yeah. 20 pounder. Nice. 18 to 20 right there. Beautiful job, dude. Solid yellow tail on the vertical Whee! jig, on artificial here on day one. Look at that. That ain't a bad first decent fish to hand. That's a great first fish, bro. <sighs> yeah. This is how we fish around here. Out here doing our own thing. This I love it. This is how we it. do it, man. Way out away from everybody. Well, I told those guys, I was like, you see Jeff over there? My strategy is I'm going to follow Jeff. <laughs> I feel like Jeff knows what he's doing. And sure enough, what a sick fish to start this trip off Absolutely. with. Oh, Absolutely. Look at that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whew. Whew. Oh, man. Yeah. Now we're talking. Uh, Great job, dude. Dios mío. Yeah. Fuerte son, no? Cuidado, yeah. It's okay. Listo, listo. Okay. Gracias, amigo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. La sangre. He'll wash it down for you. Oh, you will? Yeah, Just boated about a 20 pound yellowtail, fellas. They're out here. Yeah, but oh. Oh, I love it. That was rad, man. Woo. It's okay. Wanna wanna? Yeah. Listo. Gracias, amigo. Hola, coca. Todo bien? Todo bien ahora, okay. amigo. Okay. Todo okay. bien. Muy bien. Tengo mi pescado. ¿Qué yeah. más puedo necesito, eh? Nada más. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness gracious. If you guys have never caught a yellowtail, or as my New Zealand, my Kiwi friends call them, yellowtail kingfish, those fish are just bruisers. They're actually uh, in the amberjack family, which anyone that's caught an amberjack, you know, uh, just such a strong fish. It's just a strong, like muscular profile for a fish to have. And uh, for, yeah, really first reasonable fish to hand. I think that bodes pretty well for the rest of the trip, but. I got some trash in my boat, I'm sorry. I made a mess. Listo? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, eh, ahorita ya no vamos a Yeah. Más en frente? Yeah. Perfect. All right, what a killer day of fishing. So cool, such a cool fishery. Beautiful place, could not ask for better conditions. Uh, we just loaded up the kayaks. About to head home, but first we're making a pit stop. Jeff here. Spotted some whale bones the other day, washed up on the beach, and now we're gonna try to collect some more and uh, get some cool decor. We're seeing a ton right here on this beach. There's too many rocks to land the boat, so we're gonna, a couple of us are gonna hop in the kite, and try to bring back some whale bones. Little uh, fun little extracurricular activity before we head in. For me, these trips are always about way more than the fish, you know, it's about the whole experience, and uh, this will be a new one for me. Whale bone hunting. Collecting whale bones. <laughs> Call me the bone collector. Look at this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's so much bigger than it looked. <laughs> I am mad. <laughs> Sat here with my whale bone. It's gonna be interesting. Oh, look at these shells. Bird's nest. A lobster. Here we go. <laughs> look at this guy. That would be a whale vertebrae. Look at this guy. <laughs> Check that out. We got some gray whale or humpback whale just based on where we're at in the size, but. That is sick. Look at this. You can tell what these birds have been eating because their their droppings are all have red in it. Look at this. Very obvious that all these birds are feeding on these crabs. Fishing is my favorite pastime, but 
probably my favorite side effect of fishing is getting to learn about all these different ecosystems and environments and kind of how the, the different organisms in, in these fisheries all kind of co-mingle and, and play off each other. It's super interesting to me. Well, cool little pit stop, got some whale bones. I think Jeff's gonna make some kind of furniture or decorative something or other for the lodge. So if you guys come out and book this trip, maybe you'll uh, get to check out a whale bone that yours truly harvested. I think it's time to get back. It's gonna be interesting uh, paddling on this kayak with all these bones in it. It's out here paddling my whale bones around. Another day in the life. Okay, one whale bone. I gotta see Rob, I'm not quite. <laughs> you know, we had a bone room. <laughs> now that's what you call a haul of whale bones. I think we got two vertebrae, seven rib bones, and this unidentified behemoth, I don't know what that is. Best day of bone hauling I've ever had, that's for sure. Worn out, bro. Yeah, I know. Whew. How's the day? Thanks for the help, boys. You bet, man. Of course. I'll send you an invoice. <laughs> and we're back. El Pueblo. What a fun day. What a cool day. Coming back with yellowtail, fresh fish, and whale bones. That is a first, ladies and gentlemen. Scratch that one off the bucket list. Gosh, what a beautiful day, man. It was like, honestly, as good as it gets. While Jeff tells us that this was a slow day by his standards, we caught a ton of fish. And I revel in the fact that I left everything on the water. I fished hard, weeding through countless bonitos, and finally got my trophy yellowtail. Yeah, that was solid. Yeah, that was good. Oh, wow, professional. Okay, okay. Get up, you amigo. It's a cuchillo, solamente. Look at this guy's doing work with this uh, Gerber fillet knife. Just ripping this yellowtail apart. He just broke down that yellowtail in like 18 seconds flat and got the thumbs up on the Gerber fillet knife. He's got his own knife he was showing me that he likes. That's like his jam, but uh, this thing's getting the job done. I've never seen anyone clean a yellowtail this fast in my entire life. Mucho, mucho. Gracias, Check this out, Martin, the guy that just cleaned our fish. He also makes all kinds of stuff, jewelry, and I just picked up this Mahi necklace from him, Dorado necklace. Super reasonable price, he's a super cool guy, and I will use this as a kind of a memento of my yes. time here. Dinner on night one, caught some yellowtail. We got some fish tacos. Man, that looks good. Every day on the water is a chance for a new lesson. But today reinforced one that I've learned countless times before. You can't control the conditions or the fish, but you can control your effort level and the quality of people you choose to surround yourself with. Can you go sit down? Bon appetit. In my book, today was a win in every way. Jeff already ate a second one. Just right there? Yeah. He's on first. Hey, maybe I'll start an old side business. There might be whale enthusiasts that just want to come get a bone. <laughs> Two whale bones. Two, two, yeah. whale, bones. two whale bones. Ah, 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 ah. Whale hail. <laughs> Not to have a whale of a time. Uh, okay, I'll stop, stop, I'll stop. Stop, I'll stop. Stop, Rob. I'll, I'll stop. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's been a long day. Mike, I got a bone to pick with you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> got him. All right. That's enough dad jokes for one afternoon. Bad about enough of me. I'm gonna leave him be. Cedros pa uh, proper. Pa uh, uh, Cedros proper. And we're back. <laughs> it's 
Just out here paddling my whale bones around. Another day in the life.